This is an extract from Stick It Up Your Punter, The Uncut Story of the Sun, a book I wrote a few years ago with Peter Chippendale about uh, the Sun newspaper. This is from the chapter about the Hillsborough disaster. Um, it's an extract. On the Tuesday morning, the Sun started flying the hooligan kite with a vengeance. A Sun Says editorial headed scapegoats asked, Is it fair to make the police the scapegoats for the Hillsborough disaster? It happened because thousands of fans, many without tickets, tried to get into the ground just before the kickoff, either by forcing their way in or by blackmailing the police into opening the gates. So far, we have not heard a word of criticism of those fans in Liverpool. The next day, that criticism was to come over loud and clear as Mackenzie demonstrated how his brand of shoot from the hip editorship could be as violent, irresponsible and destructive as any of the hooligans the Sun had previously concentrated on so obsessively. Former Royals reporter Harry Arnold, who had been taken off the Royal Beat by Mackenzie and was now a general news reporter, was given the job of weaving an overall story out of the mass of copy that had been filed. Arnold did not like the look of some of it at all. The hacks and the agencies whose names were on it were reliable, but the filthiness of the accusations they were reporting was something else. Arnold loaded his finished story into the system with even more than his usual scrupulous care. In his opinion, it now needed handling as delicately as a ticking bomb. Seeking out Mackenzie, the editor, he confided his fears. We've got to be really careful with this stuff, he said. These are only allegations that we're reporting, you know. Yeah, yeah, Mackenzie assured him. I know that. It's all right, Harry. Don't worry. I'm going to put some fans in there. Mackenzie then did an enormously uncharacteristic thing. He sat for fully half an hour thinking about the front page layout. The story Arnold had written had been the automatic splash from the moment it came in. But as he doodled with layouts, for once Mackenzie's flair for instant decision-making seemed to have deserted him. He was obviously torn as he weighed up two alternative headlines. The first was his most vicious slag-off phrase, you scum, bringing into play the vilest word in the Sun's vocabulary and putting all the Liverpool fans on the scum of the earth agenda which the paper advanced. That was bad enough, but the second and the one he finally sketched out on the layout pad with his fat green marker pen was to prove even more calamitous. When he made up the front page, Mackenzie had kept his word to Harry Arnold by including the promised qualification some fans had been involved in the bad behaviour. But for all the difference it made, he might as well not have bothered. He had not gone for a clever punning headline or one of his master strokes of witty alliteration, but had instead chosen the bull statement which every newspaper prints at its peril. The truth. The two words were printed in huge letters on a massive white on black box dominating the front page layout. Underneath, in large lowercase type, were three subheadings. Some fans picked pockets of victims. Some fans urinated on brave cops. Some fans beat up PC giving kiss of life. The story started. Drunken Liverpool fans viciously attacked rescue workers as they tried to revive victims on the Hillsborough soccer disaster. It was revealed last night. Police officers, firemen and ambulance crew were punched, kicked and urinated upon by a hooligan element in the crowd. Some thugs rifled the pockets of injured fans as they were stretched out unconscious on the pitch. Sheffield MP Irvin Patnick revealed that in one shameful episode, a gang of Liverpool fans noticed that the blouse of a girl trampled to death had risen above her breasts. As a policeman struggled in vain to revive her, the mob jeered, throw her up here and we will... That, that's um, uh, blotted out. We will dot, 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 dot her. Um, the story went on. 
One furious policeman who witnessed Saturday's carnage stormed, as we struggled in appalling conditions to save lives, fans standing up the terrace were openly urinating on us and the bodies of the dead. A high-ranking police officer was quoted as saying, The fans were just acting like animals. My men faced a double hell, the disaster and then the fury of the fans who attacked us. At the end of the story, the MP, Pat Nick, was quoted as saying, I have kept quiet about this because I did not want to inflame a delicate situation, but these are stories told to me by policemen just after it had happened. One important question that must be answered is the part alcohol played in this whole tragic business. And there was no lawyer to hold him back. The allegations, if unprovable, were an outrageous libel of all the people involved, but they were legally safe as they did not name any names. As Liverpool City Council later found out, um, to its naivety and surprise, when it tried to sue the paper. In many ways, the events had not been that difficult to reconstruct. Comprehensive analysis based on replaying the television coverage and examining the mass of press photos showed most of what had taken place. More important were the statements of the fans who had actually been there. Despite its size, Liverpool was still a close-knit community and the majority of fans who had been at Hillsborough were part of the even closer community of dedicated followers faithfully attending all the club's games home and away with great experience of crowd situations. By pooling their knowledge, recollections and the visual material, they had arrived at analysis of the disaster, which had been largely confirmed by excellent reporting in the local press and on local television. The conclusion was that some fans had been drinking, including some of those who had died. Many had been boisterous in the pubs, doing a roaring trade before the match, but this was all par for the course, and drinking had nothing to do with the tragedy, as Lord Justice Taylor was to confirm. As to the specific allegations presented by the Sun as the truth, there was no evidence of any kind to support them, and none was ever produced. A stark letter in one of the broadsheets did agree that it was true some fans had urinated and vomited. But the letter pointed out that was what people did when the life was being squeezed out of them like toothpaste out of a tube.